welcome to 3D Shop Talk, Focus on Process, where we get to poke around another sculptor's studio and get a peek into all of the processes and tools that they use to create their sculptures. I'm Christine Poole, and today we have the pleasure of talking with Nicole Grosjean, a sculptural illustrator who works with paper. And say hello, Nicole. Hello, everybody. So I thought it would be interesting if we could start off just by seeing some of your finished pieces. So this is a newer piece. And uh, this one is based on Beauty and the Beast. So all the paper is cut and then painted. And the fan staves are actually uh, laser cut abalone shell. And I made all the designs myself and then had them cut by a company. It's beautiful. And then this piece is part of a series that I'm working on that's going to be uh, medieval bestiary. That's gorgeous. I have the K. <laughs> yes, Kelpie is one of my favorites. Um, these are some of my larger pieces. So this one is based on Pan's Labyrinth. That's um, this one has almost I think two thousand individual pan cut pieces of paper that are all layered up and then I backlight them with LED lights. And then this one is based on the tarot death card. And I think this one's about a thousand individual pieces. Uh, each of those wings has about 360 feathers on it. Wow. Yeah, that's so interesting and so beautiful. This is something that I did last year for a Game of Thrones show. Uh, this is actually a hand-carved ostrich egg. Oh, wow. Yeah, that one was that one was tough. I didn't realize how hard ostrich eggs were, so it, it took a long time to carve. So that one was for a show in um, California. And what about the, the rooster piece that was to the far left? Uh, this was one for an annual show here in Denver That's they do um, the Chinese New Year show every year. So this was Year of the Rooster. So those are some of my finished pieces. Would you be able to take us through the process that you're using to create some of these things? Absolutely. And I'll actually uh, do the process of this piece because I have uh, quite a few sketches and uh, templates for this one. Uh, so I can kind of show from beginning to end how this one came around. Great. This is my workspace here. Um, every piece starts with kind of a concept sketch, just something quick that I can get the idea together. And then I refine those sketches to come up with basically my templates. So everything is traced off of this, these drawings for the final. And then I make templates of every single individual little piece that's in there. And this is just the pieces from the Pan's Labyrinth. Wow. So every single, piece is copied off of the original sketch and then I transfer it transfer it with the uh, tracing paper to the back of the paper I'm working on. So for anything that's going to be painted it's going to be on watercolor paper um, and I typically use like the uh, usually hot press because I need to get quite a lot of detail but for things like the wood in his his body I use a cold press so it has a little bit more texture. Um, so everything is cut from the back so you don't see any of the pencil lines. And then it's all put together piece by piece. I glue it down with uh, PVA glue, which is acid-free pH neutral, uh, and it just will keep it from yellowing uh, over time. So it's basically a, a book binding glue. And for all the little tiny pieces, I have some watchmaker tweezers that I use to put all those down. And these things are invaluable. I love these tweezers. Uh, for pieces that need to be shaped, I actually shape them with these tools. So you're able to just kind of 
like almost like stretch the paper, like sculpt the paper into like- Exactly, this, um, this mat here is, is kind of a foam rubber. So you can press down into it and it'll keep the paper, uh, the more you press, the more the paper will bow with it. And it keeps it from tearing. So it's nice and nice and firm, but you just kind of work the paper back and forth until you start getting a nice curve on it. Do you have a, a little piece of paper that you could show that to us with? Sure. Uh, also, this is the knife that I use. It's uh, specially customized. It's actually a leather carving knife. And I had the, the, the ceramic blade taken out and a nice uh, cutting blade put in. These are uh, in tea cutter blades. They're made in Japan. They're really nice sharp blades and they stay uh, really, really sharp as you work with them. So everything that you cut is cut with that? You don't cut anything with scissors or any other tool? Pretty much just this. Uh, if I'm doing long straight lines, I'll use a ruler and uh, like a really nice straight blade for that. But anything that's detailed is cut with this knife. That would be interesting. Uh, maybe you could show us what it looks like when you're cutting something, just like a random. Absolutely. Yeah, I can, I can work on a, a little piece here and show you kind of how that how it works to to cut and shape. Who actually adapted that tool for you? Did you do that yourself? No, I actually have a friend. He is a woodworker, but he also has tools for um, some machining tools. So he customized that for me. Does it put less stress on your hand uh, as opposed to using a regular X-Acto knife or scalpel blade? Um, for me, what it does is it keeps the blade really nice and upright, so it keeps it from breaking as often. I see. I like that better light here. So it just, it keeps it almost vertical, and it's, most of the pressure is just on the knuckle, uh -huh. so I can just press down with that. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of pressure, uh -huh. and then all the detail work is just spinning it and kind of rolling it between my fingers. Ah, that is so cool. <laughs> and I don't know why they don't make these for paper cutting, but they don't. I have looked everywhere. Maybe you should, um, design, maybe you should design one and start production with that. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to look into it because I think this would be an invaluable tool for a lot of artists. It's just, it's such a great tool. So I'll just cut uh, something that sort of resembles a, uh, a flower petal here. Do you have to apply a lot of pressure? Not really. Um, it kind of depends on the thickness of the paper. This paper is fairly thick. It's a, uh, a Stonehenge paper. So, you know, it's, it's, it's almost it's a little bit thicker than a cardstock. Um, I really love this paper because it gives a, a really nice curve to it without breaking. Um, for some reason, cardstock tends to kind of wrinkle when you work with it. So if I'm planning on this being the face of it, because this is the uh, smoother texture, I'm just going to kind of work it from this side. You can see it just gives it a nice kind of cup to it. And this is the same process you would use on feathers? Yes. So what you're, you're saying, kind of... what you're saying is that you did that individually like thousands of times to make that those set of wings. <laughs> uh, those, those wings actually don't have a whole lot of um, three-dimensionality to it, but I am working on a piece that does. And uh, those I actually have some... Uh, can you hold that pedal up to the camera so that we can just see the kind of dimension that you got on it? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, it's pretty subtle, but it makes it so much more interesting than if it were just flat. It is subtle, but once you get some light kind of coming from the side, you can see it pretty clearly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you definitely can see that you've got that complex S-curve happening. So I can show you the piece that has the feathers on it. You can kind of see 
what I've been working on. So these are some pieces that I have in progress. So this one, all those individual feathers I cut on a cutting machine and they also embossed uh, a feather kind of grain to it. Each of those I embossed uh, by hand to give it the, uh, the dimensionality. What's a cutting machine? So over here, this is my cutting machine. It, um, it basically creates, it cuts anything that you can make with an illustrator file. So a lot of things like scales or feathers um, that I need produced in mass that I just can't cut by myself, um, this will cut it for me. So I've been kind of experimenting with different things. Here's a, a dragonfly wing I've been working on. And the great thing is you can cut other things too. So this is a um, holographic film on top of some black paper. Huh, that's gorgeous. This one's based on Howl's Moving Castle. Um, it's for a show uh, next year in California, I think. So he hasn't got any paint yet, but he's getting there. How do you make the um, those feathers curve? Is that just done with those ball tools again? It is, yes. Okay. And then they also have a little bit of metallic watercolor paint just on one edge. So that gives it kind of some of the greens and purples and blues. That's beautiful. Thank you. This has been a really fun piece to work on. And uh, it's got a long ways to go, but it's it's getting there. And you said you had another one in process as well? Yeah, this is the other one I'm working on. It's based on um, a grim fairy tale called Thousand Furs. So this is just the, the sketch and the character. I'm just getting the, the cloak of a thousand furs painted up and made. And then got the background pretty much done. Wow. And you cut all of that out. This is actually cut on a laser cutter. So all of this is, um, like you can, it's all cut out. And then um, I, I gild everything. This is 21 karat white gold. This is 24 karat gold. And all of this is three dimensional. So I, I had to weave all of these in and out and then uh, gild on top of them. And those are all individual pieces of paper. This is actually mat board, so it's got a little bit more thickness and um, a little bit more strength. And do you have the laser cutter in your studio or is it somewhere else? This I actually had cut by a company here in Denver, but I did just buy a laser cutter, so I'm hoping to be able to do more in-house. Um, so I can't do anything this big. I'll probably still have to get their help on large pieces, but I'm hoping to do some small like jewelry size pieces with, with my own cutter. And on the, the coat that you were just showing for the figure that goes inside of this frame, um, that's all being painted with watercolor or acrylic? It's watercolor, kind of base coat, and then gouache on top of it. Okay. And the, the full figure will also be uh, cut and illustrated. And in the story, her dress is supposed to sparkle like the stars. So I have some fiber optic fabric that I'm going to be running through the the dress, the fabric part of the dress. Wow. That's going to be a stunning piece. Oh, I, I'm looking forward to getting it done. It's something that's been on my, uh, my wish list to get done for a while. So it's something I'm focusing on this year. And um, the last time we, we were looking at your studio, um, you had a piece that had, it was like a white piece with, it was a commission that had white feathers. Is that still there? Um, it's actually a dragon and uh, they, it's, it's a commission and they don't want it shown. So I can't oh. really show it, unfortunately. <laughs> I wish I could, cause that's gonna have like 6,000 scales on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon, yeah, they don't want it shown. Okay, well that's too bad because it's really phenomenal. <laughs> um, so this is my laser cutter. 
I just got it like a month ago, so I'm still working with it and uh, figuring out what it will do and uh, yeah, what I can achieve with it. Uh, what kind of materials does it cut? Uh, it cuts pretty much anything but metal. Um, so I'm planning on, I was just doing a, an acrylic piece yesterday, so that's some acrylic in there. Is um, that about the size that you can cut? Is that like four by six or something? It'll cut the full bed, which I think is like 20. Okay. Um, but most of my pieces are like 24, 36, so I'll still go to my, my laser cutter people here in Denver to get that done. Um, they're a great company. They're called Geekify. I use them for so many different things. And are you, are you using Illustrator to create the templates for the laser cutter as well? Yes. So everything that's done on the laser cutter and um, this little cutter have to be Illustrator files. So I still do a lot of digital work, um, probably more than I would like to do uh, to get those done, but it's been so nice to have. Um, I, there's just no way I could cut 600 feathers by hand for, for something and get it done in a reasonable amount of time. So all the feathers for both of these pieces were cut on, on that machine. Is that machine specifically designed for paper cutting or is it designed for some other thing that you've adapted it? It's meant for paper cutting and uh, also like vinyl. So um, this piece here, the birds in the background is actually a vinyl that's stuck onto uh, a layer of uh, plexiglass that the paper is glued down to. And then same with this, this pattern behind his chest is also a vinyl. Do you always put the, um, on the larger pieces, do you, are you always putting some kind of a lighting element on there? I have been recently. Um, I really enjoy the lights, I think it gives uh, it gives a different dimension to the pieces, and they're kind of fun to play with. Like this one has um, several different settings. It also has a remote, so you can kind of play with it. And if you want to stop it on a specific color, you can. So it's just it's kind of fun to be able to customize a piece um, that you wouldn't normally be able to. It would also highlight the kind of translucence of the paper too, yes? It does. And you know, depending on the type of paper, and it, uh, when it's totally dark, these pieces just, the, the wings glow, um, the heart really glows well. There's just so many things that you can see in full dark, which I just can't do here. Yeah, it's, it's a rough thing to live in a place where there's a lot of sun, right? <laughs> So like this one, the, so that there is actually a moon, it's fully illustrated, um, and then like this down here is a stained glass window that the light's coming through. Mm -hmm. The light's kind of highlighting each of the, the pieces. So on a, a piece like that, you've got just like literally hundreds of hours. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. When you are, um, when you're doing something like the dragon scales or the bird feathers, um, mm -hmm. are you, are you placing all of those little pieces? Are you just doing that by eye or do you have, have you drawn little lines as to where the feathers are going to attach and how they're going to arc? Or are you just doing that through intuition? I work directly on top of my sketches. So when I'm gluing things, I will glue from back to front. So I'll put down, you know, this, these pieces first and then glue this on top of it directly on top of the sketch so I know everything is going exactly where it needs to go. Interesting. Yeah, when all of your guidelines get covered up that must get a little bit uh, scary. <laughs> it does. Some of it's a little bit of a guesswork and just trying to get it as close as possible to the sketch. Um, but everything fits together like a puzzle piece, so everything kind of needs to, 
to be pretty exact or something's going to be off in the end. Yeah, I would imagine when there are all these individually cut pieces of paper, it has to be quite precise. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just looking at the feathers that you're doing. I mean, it's just so precise that it's hard to imagine that uh, you're able to get that degree of precision. These were a little bit more free form. Um, I kind of knew, I drew in the directions that I wanted them to curve. Um, but other than that, it was just kind of going at it. And again, it had to be layered from the back to the front. Mm -hmm. So it started, there's a, a piece of black paper behind all of it that it's glued down to. So I just started at the edges and then moved towards the center, putting each one down with, with glue. Do you ever have the glue detach or is it just pretty bomb proof? This, this glue is really good stuff. I mean, and unless you tear it, it's really not going to uh, let go. It looks like there's a certain amount of flexibility to it as well, maybe. Or is that just the paper that's flexing? It's the, well, the glue is, is pretty flexible as well. It's, um, it's not brittle. It's, it's almost, I don't want to say like plasticky, uh, rubbery. So it's, you can bend things without them breaking. Um, really the only things that I've had trouble with are the big flat pieces like like his face is all one piece um, and that the paint will crack before the glue does. Interesting. So his, his face I actually had some uh, issues working it so it actually cracked but it worked really well for him it works for his character. Yeah sometimes the the materials help us out in ways we didn't quite expect right? Exactly. <laughs> so it's, you didn't talk about your jewelry either, right? I didn't. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually working on a whole bunch of new jewelry this year. So it, it should be really process? interesting. I'm sorry? Do you have any in process you could show us? Um, it's, you know. <laughs> it really doesn't look like anything just yet. Um, I get the, the wood pieces made by an, a company on Etsy, um, and they're just really nice people and they, they hand make all the, um, the wood bezels and then I put the paper in it and fill it with the resin. Mm -hmm. Are you wearing so, them right now? Oh, let me see if I can. Oh yeah, that's that um, skull moth, right? Mm-hmm. Those are so great. Uh, the ones I wanna work on this year because I'm focusing on um, fairy tales they'll all be kind of fairy tale based or mythology based. So um, the company makes kind of coffin shaped ones. So I, I bought some uh, red color um, abalone shell that will go in the back. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna do some vampire bats in them. Oh, cool. so those are gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to those. Yeah. And did you make these guys as well? The I did. These are uh, actually a uh, die cut plastic. So it's my design and then I sent it to a company and they die cut them in plastic. They make uh, plastic business cards um, but I just put a little hole in it, punched it, and made it to earrings. Yeah they're great. They're really fun. Yeah, they're really fun. They're really light so they're you know they don't bother you wearing them you know long periods of time. Uh, so cool. but in October I've got a, a small solo show okay. that I'm working on uh, all pieces are going to be basically based in fantasy um, and um, I want to say like fairy tale themes so a lot of grim maybe some mother goose I'm not sure but mostly grim um, so I'm hoping to do like 10 different illustrations uh, probably two or three big ones and then uh, some small kind of vignette type illustrations for the That's show for this coming October 2020 it is. And where is the show? It's going to be at Valkyrie Gallery, which is in Lakewood, Colorado. Is there, nice. um, is there anything else that you wanted to show us? I think that's pretty much my studio. Um, I do love to have work of other artists, so I have kind of a, a board of inspiration of different originals I've collected over the years. I have one of those Aria Fawn pieces, too. Oh, I love Aria's work. <laughs> and I've got uh, got this piece here if it'll show. Oh, yeah. That looks like an original pool. 
<laughs> it does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So I think it's unfortunately about time we're going to have to wrap this up, but thank you so, so much for opening your studio to us. We're so grateful to you for taking the time to show us a bit about how you create these amazing and beautiful things that you do. Can you yeah. tell me uh, where people could find more of your work? Uh, my website, which is paperfauna.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and all those links will be on my website as well. Um, I'd also like to say that we are ourselves the proud owner of a, an original Nicole Grosjean, K for Christine, as well as Kelpie. And I just wanted to say that everything about this piece, from the amazing artistry that she puts into every little detail to everything just being so beautifully and professionally finished to how it arrived at our house, beautifully wrapped and packaged. Everything about it was just beautiful and so impressive. And we are just delighted to have one of Nicole's pieces in our personal collection. So uh, to everybody who tuned in and joined us for a few moments to look at some of our process talks, uh, thanks so much. And until next time, keep creating. Bye-bye. Bye. Here we go. Take one. <laughs> Grosjean. Grosjean? Yes. Grosjean? Yes. <laughs> okay. And today we have the pleasure of talking to Nicole Grosjean, a sculpture, sorry, say it again. <laughs> sculptural illustrator? Yes. Sculptural illustrator? Yes. See how easy it is to start over? <laughs>